All right, so welcome everybody for the final installment of the Universal Proofs about Caesar Alvarez. It's all yours, take it away. Okay, so let me just first uh, recall a little bit of the, what we're doing uh, on Wednesday. So I thought that, uh, uh, yes, sorry, it's my fault. Uh, start the set three and on empty. We write f of g to be the free star algebra. Generated by g. And we talk about two kind of formulations that we want to impose when the, the inverse is algebra, one uh, is this non relation. Formally, we just define as a pair where you have elements of the free star algebra and a non negative number. And I introduce this different kind of relation. SOT relations is just a net. We are. And then we wanted to be the uh, algebra out of uh, some data. So first we need the set, and then we divide the relation in two kinds of sets. So the your our n is a set of non relations. And This RS is a set of uh, SOT relations. So that's uh, our, our data. And then it's, uh, we have this strip for admissible. We define the uh, sister algebra simple. So uh, the idea is that you want to find representations of this freestyle algebra on a Hilbert space and the relations uh, in order to be satisfied whether the norm of this element X when represented is less or equal than eta. And this net, we want to convert to zero in strong operator topology. That rather than means our representation satisfies the relations. And this admissibility condition is that whenever we have a family of representations, we can take the direct sum, and again, it's going to be a representation. Uh, and then this is enough to define uh, a C star semi norm in this free star algebra. Then we take the quotient by the elements where this, this same norm is zero. Then in the quotient, we obtain a C star norm. And then we can complete uh, the star algebra with the C star norm, and then we get a C star algebra. So this is the C star algebra over here. Uh, so today we will start with uh, well, what kind of universal property does this algebra have? So suppose that it's admissible triple. Uh, let me just, uh, before I this, uh,
So, so uh, I'm just gonna write down uh, again uh, the definition of the algebra. So we take the free algebra generated by G, we divide this by a certain ideal, and then we take the quotient with respect to the norm. But in particular, there's a very natural map uh, from the, the free algebra. This is algebra of the, the strip pool. Which is basically uh, take an element, you know, take the quotient. But depending on how you construct these completions, sometimes I use a, another people simulation, but I uh, don't want to go into details here. But uh, there is a very natural uh, function from, from the free star algebra to this uh, C star algebra. In general, it is not going to be injected because you're modeling out spins. And so it may happen that some elements go to zero here. Uh, but nevertheless, you kind of have, uh, in, a, in a sense, not really a comp, but uh, uh, a representation of the algebra in the system. So for the theorem, uh, I want to use this, uh, this function uh, to, to, define, uh, to define things. Uh, so, I guess I'm going to write in a, in a new slide because I'm to put the whole statement in slides. So we'll have an admissible triple. And suppose uh, the torpor function or more precise for a star homomorphism uh, Let's call it phi sister algebra to sister algebra. Here. Here is a sister algebra. So the thing is, uh, in a sense, what we're doing here is just giving some elements for, for the generators. As I said last uh, on Wednesday, instead of uh, just presenting the operators, I'm going to give you a write the star homomorphism. Uh, but here is in an abstract sister algebra. Right. But uh, the relation themselves, the non relations we can directly see here inside the sister algebra, but this strong operator topology, no. So we have to represent this algebra. Suppose that for the star homomorphism, there exists. If representation by a certain space. In a sense, we, we could forget a and see the bracket of the sound often inside your page, but uh, the thing is that usually when we are working in sister algebra, we have uh, an abstract sister algebra, not a uh, representative version. So I went to, to directly I build this the homomorphism to, to A. Uh, so suppose there's a paper representation such that when you take the composition, 
So this is going to, it's going to be a representation of the crystal algebra. So suppose that this satisfies all relations. All normal relations in all and operator topology relations, then there exists mixed homomorphism. From the universe of star algebra. When you take the composition with the original function, so we have phi. Do you want your pi to be non degenerate or something? Yeah, what about norm? But uh, uh, you want your pi to be what? Non degenerate. Like if say A is unital, then you want pi to be unital? No, it's not necessary to be. Which were non degenerate? Which part? Mm -hmm. Which morph is this? Like zero. Pi from A to B, it's a lot of. I is a representation. Yeah, it's a presentation. It doesn't need to be unit though. If A is high as a unit, it doesn't need to go to the unit. Yes, but you can always restrict to uh, maximal subspace, subspace after the restriction of the subject. So the generality is not a problem unless your representation is not zero. I mean, assume that pi is tight. Yes. Yeah, but phi can be zero. Sorry? Psi can be zero. Yes. Oh, Which I see no problem in it. Yeah. Yes. 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 But I, I don't understand your comment, Adam, because I think just that uh, pi can be zero, universal properties satisfied, and that's it, right? I mean, it's I not. What about the, non, the, the failure of non degeneracy is not a serious thing. Okay. It's restrict to something which is. Yeah. But what you want to restrict what? Your. Uh, not the representation itself. If you represent some element as an operator, then you. But wait, wait, representation is painful, right? Yeah, the representation is painful. Maybe there's an element. There are two is steps. One step is a representation is a function from algebra to B of H, some H. Once you fix an element in an algebra, you have an operator. And yes. then you restrict this operator. So I'm talking about the restriction of this particular operator. Okay. And what does it give you? You speak an operator, and so what? So, so the representation degenerate if uh, this uh, subspace generated by all possible pi of a, for example, times h is not the whole h. You speak, it's represented. So this is something like you take a diagonal thing, okay, but you have zero. You have only one. Okay, so and I see your point. Yes. Okay. okay thank you. And I see your point. Okay. Yeah, I see your point. And we agree that it's not important for this. Yeah, for, for this mm -hmm. And, and the, the proof is almost by construction, because yeah. uh, we can just give uh, steps for the proof. Because if, uh, if you have a presentation, so Spike was five the representation that's fine the relations that's five relations and that means that for all uh, elements in this algebra 
if you take that same norm, which was the supreme over all representations, or all same norms uh, that arise from representation, uh, yes, you can write in the other way. Yes, with the norm. Is a better record than same norm in the crystal algebra. So this implies that we can then go to the quotient. So uh, get back to the quotient. This. So this is going to be well defined. Right. And, and moreover, for any element in the ideal, for our element in the ideal, uh, if you take this. Not five, five back, this is going to be plus y it's going to be less real good than the complex of x itself uh, because it's less real than norm of x plus y but it's these triple things that are the same norm uh this is less real than this same norm in x plus the same norm in y, but the same norm in y is zero. But this idea is just the quotient, the, the idea that uh, the, the same norm is zero. Uh, so basically, the saying that uh, when you take this, uh, this function from this quotient to the B of H, it's going to be contracted. Because, uh, yes, you could put. So, so it's because you can match the ideal to zero, right? Which means yes. that the, the ideal is contained in a kernel of this map, so that we have the map induced map on the quotient. More than the inducing a map in the quotient, we want this to be contracted. Pi composed with pi of x plus what? Y, right, element of an idea. Uh, okay, okay. And because of the inequality on above, that it's contracted. Yes. I guess, I guess I have to write a little bit different here. I want to, to write uh, this there. It's you. This is it's well this is well defined. Right. Oh, and then when you take the infimum over all i's, you get the, the norm of the class, and then this is implied this. Uh, so since this is contractive, we can go to its continuous, and then we can go to the completion. 
the woman uh, you were laughing and there was why on the right side before so that was a problem yes before 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 yes yes should we should be here mm -hmm. i don't want to ask yourself yeah with all experts why because i want to take the information so this is contracted and then and go to the conclusion. Basically, uh, once you do this, there's this map by head. And it goes from this C star algebra. Okay. It's defined basically to the problem. Just that. So if you take pi hats, uh, could, could you come back to the previous page? Why do you have here equality? Because this class, I can take pi is the uh, Why is an element in the ideal? Ah, you are killing. Uh, ah. Because the, uh, the, this, uh, this class of the, or the map on the quotient, I can choose any representative so pi. Pi is defined on, on the free algebra without any relation. Yes. And this, this I kills uh, this. Uh, yeah. Pi of. Pi kills i. Pi kills i, yes. Pi. 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 Ah, pi kills i. Mm -hmm. So pi, pi kills i as well. Respectively. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. Why? No, 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 no. Why? No, no, no. Is composite the kills i. Yes. Okay. So we can go to the, yeah. the quotients. Okay. And when uh, I'm evaluating this map on x, I can evaluate on any representative of its, its class. Yes. So I can, instead of uh, apply on x, I can apply on x plus y. That's why using the ideal. So I think the. So x in the x plus y has the same class. The statement is contained in the wild defined. What do you mean by wild defined? It means the. The line up below, right? That does you not know, depend from the choice of the representatives. Yeah. So every time so you yes. type plus something in Y, so you can choose different representatives, but yes. the right hand side, it depends on it does yeah. the, the well defined is contains the, the line below, right? No, the line below is about the, the, the norm. Well, the well, defined is just as a as a yeah, defined it on a portion that it yes. is defined does not depend as a function. As well, defined is going to be just a homomorphism, but as far as the norm goes, well, this is just an algebraic structure. Of course, there is a yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, yeah, then what is mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so so here this the from here from to here is just instead of uh, using x as a representative and using x plus y. Uh, yes, when I uh, take this from to Tio, this is going to be just uh, just a five. Because when we go back here, uh, basically, we are using the same map, uh, and this is just uh, what is actually, it? actually, sorry, sorry. So, uh, so far. I had does not go on me yet. I think that in the formulation of the TRM, two slides before, you confuse the, the order of composition. I'm not sure if you could go back. Yeah, so at the end, you have sub and then you have. Ah, yeah, five, yes, yes, you're right. Five types. So we go from out, uh, which is the free algebra, to the university. So then when you yes. apply by height, it's the same thing as going direct.
for, for now we have uh, map to the Hilbert space. It's going to be that. Uh, Map to the quotient. Actually, it's not nothing. Right, we're going to like that. But because pi, pi is stable, oh, in A, it's, it's going to be up eight. Can restrict the code domain. Technically, not really restricting this. They are applying the inverse. Uh, just the on the, the image of A inside of your page. So. A. Um, basically, what this does is it take an element here and the same to minus one. And this is going to be a well defined star homomorphism, uh, which satisfies what we need. Now, uh, and the uniqueness is because uh, if you have another another homomorphism which satisfies this condition, because the image of Yota is dancing inside of this star algebra, uh, we're going to get the same, the same as you no. Know, in a dense image, in a dense subset. So you can see. Could, could you go back to the statement so for them? Aha, uh -huh, right, okay. So, so, okay, so pi decomposes pi satisfies all the yes. steps, right? Yeah. So, so that's the thing is that uh, you always need to represent A in order to use this uh, the inversive property. If you took the the von Neumann closure in this representation pi, then the relations would hold in that. The closure then. If you took just uh, so if you in on the Hilbert space A H, you take the, the strong operator closure, yes. but then the relations are holding in this von Neumann algebra. Yes, I guess so. Uh, but uh, with respect to the strong operator topology and not norm topology. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Okay, all right. So just just a sound check. So if RS is empty, if RS is empty, then we actually define and then we obtain the universal object in the category of sister algebra. Yes, yes. Because then we don't need to represent the algebra in a space because the normal relation can be seen directly in the name. So uniqueness uh, is like straightforward. And this is also the proof that this induced map is independent of the choice of pi. Yes. Because the, it depends not on, on, on the representation, but it depends on, on, on this original function pi. Okay, so. so 
the thing is that when you build the sister algebra, uh, the sister algebra itself does not come with the representation. Uh, so it's very useful when we are we're dealing with these algebras to also use a representation of the sister algebra. So you need to prove that there actually exists a, a, such a, a representation that's fine in the relations. And, uh, and using that, you can kind of, uh, if you want, build a cat category where you, you see this as an initial object of such a category. So, uh, I have a question related to this previous question and also to the remarks by Thomas. So, uh, there is, uh, and once you would like to work with this uh, strong operator topology, you need some representation. You already agree on that. Yes. But uh, there is also a notion for so called W star algebra. I don't know if you're not familiar with the notion. It's an abstract version of phenomenal algebra, and it is defined abstractly as a sister algebra uh, which has a pre dual. Yes. Right? So, uh, how about working in this category? It does not need any representations, but it is somehow in the favor of from my algebra, but done abstractly. Do you think that maybe there is something interesting to consider in this setting? So the advantage would, would be that you don't need a representation. But how do you write these SOT relations if you only don't have the SOT, but you have weak start topology, weak start coming from a pre pretty one. Yeah, I guess you could use. Uh, and there are yeah. some theorems that, okay, all these possible topologies on people of age in general, they differ. Once they're restricted to some bounded sets, some of them coincide. I think that this is not the case uh, in the context of the strong operator topology and its weak star. But it is true for weak operator topology and weak star. So in general, these are different, but once you restrict it to unit ball, both of them are matrizable and somehow and, and uh, okay, and the uh, unit ball is always compact with respect to a weak star topology. So on a unit ball, these two topologies, weak star and weak operator topology, are different. They are the same, sorry, on the ball they are the same. I think the main issue would be to, let's say, if you wanted to call this construction, prove that this universal algebra that you built has a pre dual. I'm not sure yeah, it's going to be. But it's not for Neumann algebra, yes. Yeah, it's a star, yeah. yeah, it's not for Neumann. Yeah, it's a star, yes. But uh, if you want to try, uh, I, I think there's going to be some difficulty on proving that this object that you're constructing has a pre dual. If you want that, uh, it's, uh, you can, because What's the construction here? So it's with the construction here is that we look at this free algebra, right? And then we look, we, we have a family of semi norms, right? And then then we figure out the, the, the noun space of this semi norm. It means that you can find some interesting topology on this free algebra, like in the, in the category of von Neumann algebra, probably. That's it. Yeah, so, so definitely, I'm not saying that this construction yeah. that without change and yeah. will produce something which has pre dual. No, no, no. Yeah. Uh, you can somehow perform this construction differently, carefully enough to obtain yeah, something. But you are losing something. Because this is about sister algebra plus some additional structure. If you, if you want to generalize this, you should consider sister algebra maybe with an embedding in, into some weak star, yeah. star algebra. Yes. So and you cannot be reduced to either. W star algebra, star algebra, but it must, must use this hierarchy of different structures. So still, there would be some like something like a choice of a representation. Yeah, probably. And scale, yeah, yeah not be obeyed, but yeah. it's something. Like I think it's it, it's a choice of the topology on this free f of g, right? It's mm -hmm. like a, what kind of uh, yeah, we can. We but, but but your intuition is 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 it's okay because uh, all objects in two which you are representing your algebra, they are of the of, the, of this form. Mm -hmm. So it is something lacking here on the level of this universal object that it is not of the of the same form. Mm -hmm. so, so if I understand Adam correctly, it's, it's about finding the same structure for all these objects in which we rep are representing. Our, uh, our oh, 
and, and keeping the same kind of structure on the on the universal, universal level. So this would be the solution to the uh, universal property in this category of yes, yes. To, to yeah. algebra with an embedding in W star algebra. Yeah. So even here, if instead of C star algebra generated by this quotient, if we take the weak closure, and then uh, but the weak closure, I think it needs a better representation to, to take the weak closure. No, so like the, the quotient that you take FG quotient I, yes, you took non closure, right? Yes, in some representation. No, that's uh, the completion with respect to a same norm or norm actually. This is this can be done abstractly. You don't need to represent the algebra. No, but you can do do that. Yeah, you can do you that. Can, yes. So if, with that representation, you take that weak closure and then we, uh, try to show that this is independent of that representation. Yeah, that's simple. That is what uh, Adam is saying. But, but it won't be. Because there'll be many different representations. Like, yes, yes, there will be a priori many different representations. Once there's no reason to expect it, we get the same. Yeah, yeah. So it's not clear. So uh, I mean, like, uh, is it possible? Is, can you say definitely say that it it's not possible? Um, I mean, you, you can find von Neumann algebra, but probably it's trying to prove that it has some kind of universal property, I suppose. But yes, a point is, if you want to find with von Neumann algebra, you do it at the, at the level of this f of g, right? So you find something universal, like it's topology. So I guess I had a, it would seem really surprising to me. Yeah, I, I, I'm also not sure. Like, can we? Like, uh, I'm not sure. For sure, you can represent. I, I'm going to give a, a kind of a universal presentation for the free algebra. So, I guess you could try to use that in a, in a way. Maybe just a, another quick remark. So, my, my impression is that somehow these two kinds of universality are you have different flavor. One is uh, this universality coming from having uh, some relations. So this is something like uh, uh, epimorphic universality. Uh, it, it is easy to construct uh, maps from the universal yes. object into something. Yes. And taking faithful representation is different kind of universality, like an embedding, monomorphic. So, so I think these two are somehow in, in conflict. Like, yeah. yeah, a free group, for example, is universal in the epimorphic sense. You always it's easy to construct maps from the free group to, to something. Yes. There are also objects which are universal in the sense that everything is embeddable in this in this object, and this is a different kind of universality. Yeah. Call it monomorphic universality. Okay. Different dimensions of our. Yeah, I think the main problem here is just uh, the thing about the relation. Because really, when it, if you could, I think wanted to do everything in the category of these algebras. But uh, the problem is that we, since we can't talk about the relations, that's why kind of need kind of to match the problems. There's no not a problem here because uh, he demands a very strong condition for this pi. Pi composed with phi must satisfy all these relations. Yes. So whatever this pi was, it plays no role. Yeah, but it's somehow hidden in these assumptions. Yes, uh, yes. So well, yeah, right. Hidden is yeah. a very strong assumption. Yeah. And whenever you want to use the universal property, you need to find this uh, group. But it's a matter of the definition of the meaning of this, of this word, universal mm -hmm. under which yeah. circumstances. And these circumstances are quite. Now here the universal, I mean, if I'm not a category person, I mean, universal simply means that there is no more relations except for this RN and RS. Yeah. That's the right way to say yeah. it. There's no more except this RN and RS. How to formalize no more relations? Using, using this construction, like if you have a map from this A and then you, you can map this C of A into A, like a, that's, the, the, that's the language you can construct. It. It's leave to this feed. That's yes, but exactly the language. I'm not objecting to that. I, so I think that Thomas perfectly nailed down my points. So, so this is the problem that this, uh, this is somehow hidden in the strong assumption about representation.
Okay, so, so, so this universal property allows us to build a, a, a homomorphic from this star algebra to, to set an star algebra, but sometimes we're going to do the opposite. Uh, and usually what we, we do is we, we represent the, the star algebra and then we have to find some kind of universal That way, universal representation as well. So let's just put a, a lemma here. Because we are taking the supreme of overall representation, so whenever we have an element which has now different from zero, and now different from zero. Uh, but here I went at triple. Let's uh, uh, space here. Let's, uh, so we always want to use this admissible triple. Otherwise, the idea doesn't make sense. Uh, so for every element in the, this free algebra, which has same norm different from zero, there exists a representation. Pro X. Um, In which case, such that triple norm or semi norm of x is exactly the norm of x with respect to zero representation. Uh, representation of satisfying the conditions. So basically, the, just saying that supreme is actually attained whenever we have uh, an element. Uh, Do you really mean set minus? Yes. X is not yes. the same. Yes. 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 Yeah, but, yes but, 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 what is wrong with, with X belonging to I? Yes. Uh, oh, then every representation <laughs> goes back next to zero. Yeah. So uh, the reason for this exclusion? Well, say you have a non-zero non -zero element in the quotient, but you want to have a representative in the original algebra. So this is yeah. the proof. Yeah, it's just the proof. The first, the for every element which has the norm zero, then for every representation is already norm zero, so there's nothing really to be done. So this is the trivial part of it is true, but it will be trivial. Yes, yes. So what's the ladder here? Is X in the gamma or X? No, X because <laughs> the problem is writing this, the bar sometimes don't lift up too much. As... Yeah, we, we can use for every yeah. element X. So as I said, if, if X is in Y, then that representation satisfies this. Then you can just ignore the other. But if this representation kills this uh, ideal I, you could take the element X in the quotient. Yes. Uh, It'll be the same. Yeah. Yes, but then I don't Ah, I see. This is the same norm. The level of, of the free algebra. Uh, well, and the idea is just, uh, that this uh, triple same norm is the supreme of all over same norms. Let's see. So for each n, uh, 
that's different from zero. Uh, exists in presentation row N. I'm going to just fix a set of X and algebra prohibits and it gets to take this similar and we subtract from the norm of when X. Be less and because the two points are divisible, we, we can take the direct sum of these representations. We just define the over x to be the sum. Representations, then the norm of rho x of x or can you remind me how do you know but there exists such a row line? Uh from the definition of supreme yes. x would be a part of the supreme of possible representation. So you can always realize supreme. Ah, okay. Why don't I know okay. how okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah, I just didn't remember the definition. Yeah, thank you. That's in the definition of a triple bar norm. Yes, seminal. 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 Yeah, of course. Okay, so uh, so this, this I'm not going to give all the details, but to just uh, an idea of the proof. Uh, so the idea is that again, always using the admissible triples. exists fifth representation by U of the universal sister algebra. That when you take the composition with Yota, the representation of the algebra satisfying it. Well, I'm missing here. Mm. Yeah, so this was this lucky result. Yes. So now it's complete. Yeah. So also this universal object starts 
but that is completely Facebook representation. Yes, completely normal with SOT. Yeah, that's the thing. You have zero representation. Uh, let's say, let's go back here. So, so you have a representation of this row X for each X. So you can take the direct sum over all X. It's kind of, in a way, a certain canonical representation in a way. Uh, and then you can try to take the, the closure and strong operator topology with respect to this representation. If you want to build a Bonheim algebra. The problem is, it does this one algebra has certain, certain universal property. This I don't know. It is just want to build, uh, I think the, the more natural representation to use would be using this direct sum of this row X. Yeah, so this idea about adding this embedding into a some uh, for normal algebra in a functorial way, this is not good. So, so it's an idea of of admitting some faith representation. Yeah, exactly. and this universal object also admits such a representation. So yeah, it's okay. Now, yes. now it's nice. So, as I said, I'm not going to give you all the details. Is there a in my paper with Julian and Bob? And so, so the, the idea is that for each x, yeah, we could add more stuff if we wanted, but we, it's not really needed. We get some use uh, elements in the idea we can use as well. Uh, we use uh, well, I think, I think the lemma. And we take the direct sum. Oh, X. Representations. Of the our representation of the triple, when we take the direct sum, it's part of the definition of being admissible. That is again a representation. Uh, and then we use the universal property. Because now I can, we can think that uh, go back here. So this goes the three algebra. So that can be a fake. It's going to be the direct sum of each of each x that we can reach on the notations. Uh, but this method right satisfies the relations. So we can represent in the B of A gene itself using the identity map. Uh, it's a good representation. Then we can use the, the theorem, uh, the inverse property to find. It's by you. That, that uh, could take five new composers, but uh, it's equal to row. Uh, so here we are using the, the identity of your page. This is a paper representation of itself.
And then the, the, the difficult part is to prove that this bio Q is uh, is painful. Uh, but the idea is that because uh, for the road drop X, when you take the norm, this is supremum, basically we can see that the, the norm of pro X is gonna be the triple norm of X. Uh, just, uh, you can see that for all x in the spree algebra, that triple norm of x is going to be for all x. And since this is kind of a universal application for the people, then it's just a matter of uh, an element of a. Of all elements, not of the element of the universal algebra. What made it by? Elements of the free algebra plus after we take the proteins. Then just a matter of uh, an analysis uh, exercise to prove that uh, if A is different from zero, then its norm is different from zero, so it can approximate it by this delta x, which is the triple norm, or the same norm is different from zero, and because the same norm has a norm, uh, or this representation is just the same thing, so this norm, when you represent to this A, uh, this is gonna give something that the norm of phi u of A is gonna be different from zero. So it's just a limit of a size and use the epsilon and things like that. And we can find that disease. Uh, so, alpha a zero lies of a. It's going to be injective. And uh, so it's a representation. So, here the if, if is, are we allowed to like take like uncountable direct sum of representation? Yes, that's no problem. Okay, so so maybe related to that, I have a natural question: whether it's possible to restrict to some dense set, that's yeah, not um, very countable if your algebra is yeah. separable. Yeah, yeah. Still, uh, just wait. I haven't tried to do that, but I suppose I suppose it can be done as well. Let's say you have uh, yeah, if you generate as a accountable set, then but in both within this row of X, abstract the partier each particular X yeah. somehow vary continuously. Yes, yeah. no, that's simple. If you take your then sets, you you yeah. the presentation which it presents exactly the norm, and then it takes a direct sum. Too simple. Yeah, I think it works fine. Yeah, take a sub uh, then subset. Yeah. Then it's, uh, oh, okay, okay. So you have equality on both sides, but those are elements approximate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm a bit confused about this statement here. So you, we had a lemma before, right? Yes. That for every x, there exists row x such that this equality holds. But here, it, but for each x, it was a different row x. And now yes. here, you have one row for all x's. Yes. Because we take the direct sum. That's it. OK. That's it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we can have this is the. So, in the sense, I guess we, we can define a, a universal property in the setting. So, I'm not going to write it down, I'm just going to give the idea that uh, you have this map iota, then you have this 
system algebra <coughs> of the triple. Then I have this representation in a certain B of H. And then whenever you have another function pi uh, to a sister algebra for which there is this uh, presentation pi, uh, or it can be a different Hilbert space. So if you have the diagram, you can always complete. There's a unique if I had plus this satisfied the relation, you get also satisfied the relations. So in a sense, this, this algebra has a, a, a universal property in the sense of uh, having being an, an initial object in, a, in the category. And of course, this representation itself, it doesn't really matter because the morphism in the category is just at the level of the sister algebras and not at the level of representations. So, so what, what you, I think what you just said is that um, all the universal properties said is that if you have a map into a sister algebra, and a representation that these are all most of the composition with respect to relations, and there's a map in the Yes, yes. So are, are we going step by step to the theorem that this uh, object is uh, an initial object in some category? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's just two terms, this, this last two terms together, it's just going to be that. So the category would be. Uh, Functions or I actually here I guess we already use the star algebra, so it's going to be star homomorphism from this free algebra to C star algebras together with a paper representation, such as the composition that try the relations. So that's the object. So it's an object. Yeah, for morphisms. The morphisms are diagrams like this. I think we should label these feeds by by this R N and R S. It's not just arbitrary. V has to satisfy this Rn and Rs. Yes, yes. This composition must satisfy this Rn and Rs. Yeah, but if you write that way, then the, the, then this right row that has nothing to do with Rn and Rs. That's uh, no, it's the composition pi that has to. Yes, the, the, the composition must satisfy the relation. So. Yeah, but because pi is assumed to be faithful, then also phi satisfies the relations. No, it doesn't make any no. sense. It doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. ah, so we don't say that pi is faithful. No, no. Pi is faithful, but it just but, doesn't satisfy RS. RS doesn't uh, yes. Ah, yes. Okay. Ah, okay. Not, not an object. Not okay. It's not, okay. Okay. So if G is a, a set, if G is the free star algebra generated by a set, free C star algebra, free, yeah, free, free, star, free, free. So, so why doesn't it make sense? So? Because A doesn't have a strong operator quality. Uh, it uh, itself does, does not. Okay, matter. okay, thank you. Thank you, Jack. Yes, of course. The first level is yes. the algebraic, the second yes. is sister algebraic, and the third one is operator theoretically. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Somewhat related question. Do you have, so if, if this triple is admissible and then you delete RS, will it still be admissible? No, this is all the. That's really admissibility. Just means that direct sum properly preserves representations. That's just having the norm bound on elements. I'm not sure. They come from Rn mainly. Um, but do you have an, an example where Rs is somehow crucial to getting the admissibility? I don't have an example like that, but uh, it seems because you're going to have more representations if you take out Rs. So we're not clear for me if you had... still right in principle, except that to the extent that RS looks like it's imposing spatial data rather than norm requirements, it doesn't seem that it's certainly not as important as RN on the surface for getting that norm bound overall possible representation. But you need having the I'm not sure. I, I guess. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that's the thing. The problem, as, as I see, because when you remove this restriction, you could add more representations. So when you take the Supreme one, I'm not sure if it's going to still be bound. Sure. Yeah, but I, uh, all the examples we talked about. Are yes, things. yes. Um, sure, you uh, do get more representations, but the norm doesn't change. It's yes, just, yes, the yes. Character of the operators. Yeah. I uh, would have to think about an, uh, an example of that. Uh, it's not really clear. Okay, so I want to give uh, two examples. One uh, I've already mentioned on Wednesday, I just want to give the proof. So I want to take this G. So we're going to have a unit together for uh, call Steve. Usually I think you don't want to use the zero here. And then we just want to say that this um, uh, well one is a unit I is an isometry. <laughs> Be easy to write the expression uh, and and uh, some I X star infinity. Plus, it is equality. The strong operator topology. So we want to prove that this is actually the algebra. Um, we're going to ignore the fact that we know that it's actually simple because we just need to do that. How much from the point finish to the university algebra? But I want to build the, the inverse map as well. Uh, so, how can we can we do this? So, for the first thing is that we want to, to build a map from the, the Putz algebra to, to the sister algebra. Uh, so how do you, how can we define this? This part would be more difficult, yes? Sorry? This part would be more difficult, yes? Because that morphics into something yeah. universal, yeah. And in general, yes, yeah, but... Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know what we do with this. Because all oh, infinity simple, if it's subjective, then it's uh, isomorphism. So that's that's my point. Once you have know how to do this, then uh, actually, uh, actually, I think it's the, it's more difficult to <laughs> to do the math in the other way. Because in the other way, we need a paper representation. First of all, you think it's easy, but if you don't, uh, if you just have a sister algebra. And then have a complete paper representation. Sometimes it's very difficult to prove that in any paper representation it's going to be satisfied. But the, the right hand side has more representation than you said before. It says the extra relation. Yes. Uh, so, um, so the norm on the right hand side should be larger. So there should always be a map from right to left. Exactly. My point is, I think this is what happened. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. so the right to left should be. The um, more immediate direction. But here you're trying to go uphill against those extra representations. 
But another problem is that we don't know whether it's the right hand side is same with us. And do you use that somehow we like yes. it? The yes. fact that we know that it could solve that. Yes, same. Yes. So O infinity are defining this uh, uh, generator by left creation operators on a Fox. Like what is the definition? Yes, that's one way of doing this, but with the map for the other way around, yes. Or we just be the um the RN without the RS. So you have all these RNs that's your first line and the one RS relation, which is this one. Yes. The RNs without the RS. That is the definition of one. You think there are any stuff? Oh, there are okay. things. It's, it's, it's not yeah. in the code. Okay, you no, said more RNs immediately from this SOT by taking an X comes. Yes. Yeah. That's the definition of one. Yes. Yeah. So once again, could you remind how you precisely understand O infinity? So O infinity is the, it's the universal uh, infinity against the unit O. Into sister algebra generated by isometries Hi. That's one you have put in is this that uh, Uh, it's, uh, yeah, I guess one of, of doing this is just to say that size uh, zero. Yes, yeah. This is not really the original function. I think you just said that the, the sum, uh, all finite sums are less weak than one. That's the very it is equivalent to, to write like that, which is the no condition about uh, S uh, I as J star, different order of stars, yes, in this O infinity. S I here? No, in O infinity, no relation of the form something without the star times something with the star. Yes. No, there's no relation like that. Because there would be a relation saying that SI, SI star, or each sum like is less or equal than one. These are things in the original definition. Uh, uh, I see. Okay. So once you have an isometry, this means that S, 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 oh, S, S, yes. so S star S is identity, but S, S star is some projections, and this condition ensures us. Those projections are orthogonal. orthogonal. Yes, um, and if they are orthogonal, and the direct sense of projection is going to be less. Okay. That's why it's. it's okay. I see. But I'm confused. Why do we have a sum, not just for every i? If I look at the constructor relations. Because we need this orthogonality condition. It's just for each i, uh, it's not the same thing. Yeah, yeah but I'm doing this. Oh, but the, the question is how this inequality. Uh, follows follows from yeah. from this because it's not a definition of or it's also a property. No, the original definition by Kutzwa is like this. Okay, but then when you all this, sure. But when you take this uh, infinite Hawaiian earring and take the graph sister algebra, then the defining condition is just for every i s i s i star is less than equal than one. That's it. But no, but but that's. Together with this, of course, yes. But in Kurt's uh, definition, there's no orthogonality because this follows from this. Let me just say that. Yeah, yeah, but is it always the other way around? So now let's assume that I don't have this sum. I have S I S I star yeah. less than one, and I have orthogonality. How does it imply this less or equal than one for any sum? Uh, we actually we don't need this uh, because S I S I star is projected and projects in less or equal than one. One question. Whether we need or not. But so probability, then the range projections are always on top of each other. Yes. So the sum is all projection. And that's what this is. Yes. Yeah. 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 If, they are, if they commute, then always the sum is projection. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but still, why does is there a sub projection of one? 
when is everything once everything on triple checks are less less or equal yeah it follows so this sum every projection Every projection is less. Okay, every projection is less or equal than one, of course. Yes. Of course, yes. That was my question, actually. Yes, okay, I got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but now it tells us that these are projections, the sum is a projection, yes. and every projection is less or equal. Yes, yes. yeah, thank you. Just to quickly summarize, uh, we have to assume that all SI are isometries, for the sum. Yes, we also yes. have to assume that. S i star S j is equal to zero. no. We don't need to assume that if you have the no. But uh, I, I'm stating what John was asking. So yes, as, as you expect, you want to assume this, and then uh, from this uh, it would follow that this equality inequality is Yes, yes, yes. 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 And uh, requiring this inequality is the same as requiring that it, it happens for each uh, particular. Yes, because yeah. there are few. But uh, of course, in the algebra, in the graph setting, you would use this S F S star that's very good in projection with the unique words, but because the relations say that the unique this project unique versus the identity, it's actually not needed. So but okay, so this, this is a D unit of course, D unit of C star algebra. For me, it's not obvious. So so you have some relations, but you claim that there is a unique. C star algebra generated by this. No, no, when I put that unitary, it's just that this. Technically, the universal. He, he has said it. So. Technically, we need to add the one as a generator. It's not it a unital. Exactly. I mean, well, by, when you say isometries, you have SI star SI equals one. You need one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but uh, why, why this is. So he, his definition of O infinity, right? Is the. You didn't like it at all. all. There. No, that's what he... So what's the question? So Does it require some universal axis yeah. style? Yeah, that's it. Oh, we... ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, but he didn't mention. So, yeah, okay. Do so, you hear some uh, universal, but with different, <laughs> different things? Exactly, yes. Yeah. Is, is the universal some relations coincide, but the, the last uh, one is different. Yeah, you're right. It's missing the word universal. Okay, okay, yeah. Yeah, 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 but uh, because the O infinity simple, every representation that yeah, so find this is going to give us O infinity. Throwing my objection that it would be difficult to construct. More. Yes, how both yes. sides are universal. Exactly. Yes. 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 If something is universal. It's easy to construct more to from the universal. Yes. So, so the idea is that, uh, uh, well, of course, we want to map is S i to T i. Okay. Yes. And one to one, yes. Uh, that would be mean by one to one map. And then what we need to do is prove that uh, this as isometries in B and units is the same for both of them. Uh, so we need to prove that if this. Uh, Final projections are orthogonal. Uh, or actually, by the way, around. If you know that this converges to one in the same operator poly, then these final projections are orthogonal. Uh, but then, well, <laughs> I'm not going to prove it here, but it is uh, something that we can do in general. Uh, we have family of uh, orthogonal projections. Of page. It's that the sum here is pretty like this strong rate of polish for some projection Q. My stick is a stupid question. Can you give me an example 
of something convergent in strong operator topology, but not in norm, just refreshing. <laughs> Projections. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, actually, I don't, when, I don't want to assume they're orthogonal. I want to prove that they're orthogonal. Uh, powers on the ship. Mm. Okay. Unilateral uh, shift. Powers of the energy. Unilateral shift. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And you know, infinity, the, the sum of the projection does not converge to one. Okay. Okay. Also, what is interesting that style is continuous with respect to norm norm topology, it is also continuous with respect to weak operator topology side, but it is not, uh, not continuous with respect to strong operator This is the reason for introducing soft star as SOT star topology, which is different mm. from strong operator. Okay, so, so this lemma, uh, the proof is the lemma is the same, almost the same as the one that we use for uh, proving that the sum of projections, being a projection implies the, that this uh, projects are orthogonal, set to adapted proof. Uh, yeah, this, then using this lemma, uh, they are not going to prove it. No. This is my paper for Jenny Bach. We can simply say that if the sum of two projections is contractive, then they have to be orthogonal simply by say p plus q is less or equal to one, then p is less or equal to one minus q, and then you multiply q both sides, then pq will be less or equal to zero. So pq has to be zero. Yeah, th this is for, for two, but I think for if you, because here I, it's not necessarily finite. Yeah, no, so for each individual, you, are, you can say that PI plus PJ is less or equal to one, simply because PI plus PJ is less or equal to the sum of PIs. Well, the problem is that, uh, yeah, I still have to prove that the, the other sum that remains is still, uh, also operator. I think that the proof would maybe go back as follows that you take something which belongs to you assume that there are some two projections that are not adopted, mm -hmm. take something which dies in this common theory. Yeah, you don't need any projection, just two projections. Yeah. You will just want just two projections being uh, less or equal to one. Yeah. Yeah. We don't have a um, range that can be an angle. Uh, yes. But that's just proven. Yeah, yeah. But, but that's also this part which is in common. So yeah, I'm it's not trivial. Really, uh, yeah. yeah. Schmidtkin has a proof with some tricks. Uh, it's not straightforward. Not straightforward. No, no. Okay. Yeah, the meaning of these angles, you have to find source of these angles. You have always something which is big enough. It's okay, something. Yeah, the, the, something that, that's that's bigger than it. Yeah, this is not even a single operator. Yeah. Construct this element out of these. It just means that angles. Uh, okay, all, probably you're right. This looks simple, but, but no. uh, if you know the trick, <laughs> as it looks. I take this limit uh, as f goes to i. So, um, I have one What is it written here? For every tie, f, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I will convert to y just saying that uh, you take the net of all finite subsets yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and you take all these finite sums 
this is going to be equal to two over three. This is what this means when I write this equality here. But here, we don't know if this is operator or not, unless we say that it's equal to Q. If you don't have Q, what is this as an operator? I only have problem with your notation. So what is uh, written before? Mm -hmm. uh, if you have this lead, it's one. Lead over all finite subset of I. Finite subset approximating I. Yes. It's instead of being this, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but once you have this lemma, uh, so the, the thing is that this lemma is with respect to the strong operator poly and things in that represented. So we need to use that uh, user uh, that representation that we have. The previous theorem. But the paper presentation, the paper presentation uh, satisfying the relation between the people we are. Uh, and so the dilemma. Why is that? Uh, We take by u t by star and multiply by a star zero by j. The cutting representation is faithful. This implies that uh, t i star is. And the cost using that uh, ti and tj is a uh, mesometry. So you can multiply it by ti star on the left, by tj on the right. Hmm. And the universal property of all infinity. Sorry, why does the lemma imply this quality? Which lemma? That uh, this, if you have the a sum of projections, ah. projection in the, the original projects are um, because in the in, in this sense, when you represent this, uh -huh. you're gonna take that the, the, the representation of the phi of ti is, is gonna be or projections which sums to one instead of the problems they are top of the donality of this. Yes. Projection is will represent of the donality of yes. ranges of SIs. Similar projections being one yeah. in respect of the topology, by that projections are on top. Okay. But when we're presented in a hybrid space. And, and now when you multiply, why is it zero? So. Ah, because it's J, sorry. Yes, of course. This is perfect for infinity. This that map five. Why is this map? Because this five, as I said, it is true that once we have it map five, it's going to be a star. The marking because we have the generators of this universal algebra, or it can be simple, mm -hmm. so it's subjective and injective. But yes. just, just uh, to give an example mm -hmm. on how you build the map in the other direction. Uh, so, did you know you really need to appeal to simplicity or infinity? I thought before you said that. No, no, I don't, I don't need it. I want to build the, the inverse map. Okay. So, I want to build the uh, inverse map. Uh, so it's from the inverse of so the algorithm triple. To infinity. So we want to multiply as I try sign and set up. 
Okay, so how do we build the map from here to infinity? First of all, we need a representation for infinity. Let's find the relations. Sorry, the syntax is somehow already in this map. So, no, no, I know. So that your algebra is simple. You know that this particular map is an isomorphism, and you have a precise formula how this map acts. It just yes, yes. Those generators. I just as uh, I said, suppose we don't know that all infinity is simple. Okay. Ah, okay. This, uh, this is a matter of example. Because mm -hmm. you know, people do learn more of uh, this appeal uh, simplicity, and then we give it a more general uh, result for the Exolac algebras. And, mm. and there it's not necessarily simple, then you need to use the, the representation. Oh, no, but, but still, it could have happened that uh, you have uh, some explicit formula for an isomorphism. Uh, you know that your domain is simple, then you would know that your uh, formula in fact defines isomorphism, but from the formula, in principle, it would be not clear that uh, how, how to construct this uh, inverse isomorphism in principle. Yeah, you could, have, you could have a problem, sorry, but in this case, you don't have a problem. No, since it is already visible. Yes. The yes. yes. The one of the, the beautiful. Uh, examples that you have an isomorphism basically by assumption but you don't have an explicit inverse in general is the canonical map of Hopf galois theory right that's why you have a translation map. if it's not a special case yes we can write the formula of product antipode and so on but these are special cases in general it's a mysterious inverse which is an extremely important map not explicit, so it's so your remark is not vacuous. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, really, we can map generators yes, back. Yes. Yeah. So, but yes. here there is issue of well defined this, right? If the two sides are well defined, then we are done, right? So it's like, yes, yes. So, here, here is, is this map inverse, we're checking it's well defined, right? Because we know how to send generator to generators, yes, so, okay, yeah, yeah, here. Uh, as I said, we know that's well defined because. Oh, infinity is simple, <laughs> and there's nothing to be done. That, uh, so the meaning of, of this isomorphism is that uh, these two presentations mm -hmm. are equivalent. Yes. 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 Okay. Yeah. So this means that inside of these uh, Rn and Rs relations, you can rearrange them. Yes. Using the fact that everything could be represented uh, as uh, operators in a Hilbert space, and on operators, yes, through something. So that's a little bit hard. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I'm interested in, in, in a classical example. Uh, assume that we have this um, set of the projections PI, orthogonal or not, okay? And, and you have this RS condition that, that the sum of this projection tends to, to one, okay? Yes. What is this C uh, infinity of this uh, set of generators and RS? It's, 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 it's a little C, right? Of convergent sequences. The, the space of all convergent sequences. And then the standard view would be the standard basis vectors in little c0. Ah, so these are, um, their sums converge strongly to one, you have the right representation. As the C strong for that's not required. It's sort of like just the wait a moment. It's about this uh, SOT. Yeah, because you still need the representation of your representation satisfying the relation. I, I guess it's uh, yeah, I guess you can represent it on L2 of pen. Yes, yeah, so you don't need that they add up to it then. Strong in every representation, it's the same C star algebra. Yeah, you're distinguishing which representations you're allowing by insisting that it add up yeah. in strong algebra. Because and there they're not simple, right? So you would have to see the both directions. It's more. Yeah, so that's yeah, so if it's a countable number of projections sum to one, yes, yeah. <laughs> Let's just, just finish here. Uh, 
So let's say you have a, a hybrid space, just uh, natural numbers, and, and we know that there are subspaces. Um, Is the best one to say, ah, but if I is not kind of a one point of application, yes, I would say, finish of this free space. Okay, this space is a cardinality, that's what I, I, and then you have to one point of one because of the addition of this point. In which was said before is true. I don't know. You would like continuous function from this set of indices with discrete topology. So everything is continuous. So we know that we can decompose uh, several Hilbert space as an infinite direct sum of uh, copies of itself. So, of course, we have to write as a subspace. And actually, here is just not to be equal. Uh, and then we just sent SI to be an isometry from H. At I. So in isometry, and then you can represent uh, the full sound of the hints the P of H by mapping this as in lowercase as I. Capital But there are isometries without uh, the unit, though, and, and just remain to, to see that it satisfies that associative relation. And, and this is the case because of the graphs. Sometimes there is no such an isometry. It makes it uh, that exists so or less the same dimension. Sorry? Okay, so your Hilbert space is infinite dimensional. And all some of our, I guess you choose this HI as also yes. this dimension. It is decomposing this okay, okay. The space oh, okay. in okay. an infinite. This is isomorphic. Xi designs. Okay. Yeah, yes. I saw more. Okay. Okay. No. I couldn't read this symbol. So this is something like a, a, a expressing the set of natural numbers. So we think it says that this joint is union of the infinite with the many infinite sets. It's not belonging. Yes, yeah, so it's pretty nice. So um, okay. Okay, I see. So, so we have the freestyle but yeah. generated by the set using the unit and the TIs. We said to infinity since the unit and the SIs. Then we use this representation. And in this representation, uh, the composition is going to be satisfied the associative relation, and the others are direct because they are right isometries. Then we can do that map psi. And then using the inverse property of both things. Uh, to see that uh, they're inverse each other.
And, and, and he was interested that we could have a different representation. Let's say we added another copy of, uh, of the Hilbert space, and which is not mapped by any of these isometries. So then this direct sum is not going to be the identity. It's going to be a projection on, on, on a subspace. Uh, then it would not satisfy the asset formulation. So it's not a representation that satisfies. Just, uh, this is a very simple example to prove. Uh, I guess you finish on to talk about, a little bit about the graph straw case. Our example. Let's say you have E breadth. This is the order of the graph with the universal. I'm going to use the sister algebra approach. So sister algebra. Rated by nuclear orthogonal projections. So you kind of write putting in the definition. Some of the relations. The next bit is peace. And partial isometries. Uh, with mutually orthogonal final projections. That uh, so is really the needs S E S R F E to the projection at E is the definition given in terms of. Uh, yeah, so we need some ideas. One is yeah, the generators, and the other is the storage. Finally, detection vertex is. Yeah, I think I'm putting the other convention. Which convention? Southern Hemisphere. Because yeah, if you want to add to minus one, then you should have to use this convention. Crystal. Yeah. Yes. Place final by, by initial projections. Should I move? Mm -hmm. Those they are part of final projections. R of E is initial. Okay. Yes. This the R is initial. Yes. The S R is fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. 
Okay, so, so this is the, the graph system algebra. But now I want to define a different system algebra. Call it uh, How about this assumption that this degree image of the source map is always finite? Uh, it's when I see regular here. It's not, it's not necessarily for all vertices. We just impose this relation whenever the primitive is finite. So, in other words, these three conditions, uh, all of them are uh, of the normal condition. There is no. Uh, uh, here is the usual definition of the sister algebra of the graph, yes. just using all normal conditions. So, I want to define a different uh, approach for these algebras. No, let's call A of E. Again, it's going to be generated by uh, mutual orthogonal projections. Other universals is Yes. Oh, it's key UV. Uh, Aphrosometries. Let's see, T E again, uh, which we are talking. Final projection. And now the this the plot the, the definition of the row finite case uh, such that. We just have two relations. So we're going to say that E, e star E post projection range of E. And second relation, just the projection. V it's um star. But now instead of restricting to regular vertices, restrict to all vertices which are not the same. Not restrict it further, but not condition for, for this. Person. But it's going to be both depending on if the vertex is uh, regular or not. Yeah, but it's than S and T. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, so could you explain uh, SOT for, for which kind of uh, vertices? For SOT for infinite meters. For infinite meters. For infinite meters is SOT. Okay. For finite meters, you could also use SOT because you have a, a finite net, so finite net converts to the maximum. Could you remind me of your uh, use of drawings? Uh, regular means only finite net. Yeah. Re Re uh, regular means that the, there's at least one edge leaving the vertex. At least one leaving, okay. And at most finite at most finite net. So it's fine. Yes, living. Living, yeah. Okay. Is this finally main living with at least one of them? Okay. Yeah, and this sum is not empty, but. Yeah, then this sum is going to be fine. 
sync, it means a vertex that is nothing living. But it's going to be S minus one of is empty. Because uh, if you add the sink here, we'd say that the projection on the vertex are, are zero, but we don't want the projection on the, on the sinks to be zero. So that's why we remove sinks. So comparing to the, the other definition, we don't have the second one. And we are adding all these infinite sums relations. But the second one follows from third, right? Sorry? The second follows from third, no? For regular ones, yes. For, for regular, regular ones, yes. Yes. regular cases for all edges. And so if the source of an edge is an infinite emitter, then okay. it's a... So that's why here we need this relation. And the, the, if you allow here all infinite emitters, you don't need the second relation. Then we can remove. And the other one we need, in this one we don't. Well, now it's just OK. Now it's just OK, yes. Yes, so everything is about emitting, yes. not about know, absorbing. Yes. Absorbing is here. Absorbing the uh, symbol. This one like this. Okay. What even, can you go back to them? So if uh, V is not regular, mm -hmm. and there is no such edge, right, with the source, I don't know. No, we, we can have, uh, let's see. We have one vertex which uh, <clears throat> meets infinitely many edges. So uh, this projection P is not going to appear in the standard relation. So PD for this P there. Why not? In the usual setting. No, no, no. Here's the usual system algebra of the graph. Mm -hmm. In the usual system of the graph, if you have an infinite emitter, oh, it's it does not appear in this relation. Yes. So I thought you run the next slide. Right, okay. I mean, with the money, you don't need to do the next slide. Because when I say regular there, I'm assuming that the sum is finite. Yeah. And for the sum to be finite, that can only have finitely many edges. We want that to be finite. Okay. Yeah. But still, yeah. uh, for that edges, let's say you have an edge E here, you still want that test. The SC star, you know, so you put Yes. Yeah. And it's not going to follow from here because there's no relation. Right. That's why you need that. What is your motivation for introducing these SOT relations? All right. Yeah, yeah, was it? Yeah. This was one of the motivations. Okay. Okay. <laughs> because people say it's not possible to define a sister algebra using infinite sums. Well, it is possible. <laughs> Okay, so how do you build the map from these algebras? Connect with aliens. Oh, we didn't get this question. This was a question. <laughs> I'll ask them now <laughs> or a comment. Since we are almost finishing, I'm going to again give the idea. Uh, yes. So you can do the map from this is how the graph on this new algebra. Uh, also associated with the graph, same in each partial geometry to the corresponding uh, partial geometry in the projection to corresponding projection. Less relation on the left hand side, so you can construct it. Yeah, so, so just going back there, uh, we need to, set, to see that these satisfy the other relations. Uh, so this first one is the same as the first one. Yeah. The third one includes, this second one includes all the other third ones. Because it includes all uh, regular <laughs> and infinite meters. And then you, you, need, you need that lemma that says if you have a, a sum of uh, mm -hmm. projections, given a projection, then each of these summons less or equal than ah, one. So that's why you. This is from the start, but you do that. And using the lemma, we can have this. So we can find this method. Uh, 
I was trying to do the, the inverse. Uh, I was talking to Jack about trying to find an interesting representation, but I ended up going doing for going for a different approach. Uh, so, so this map is as a, a subjective. Yes, but if the inverse also exists, it would mean that these two are either more people. Yes. They are, they are, they are, they are. They are. Yes. Ah. That's the that's the point. Ah. <laughs> Even if you think yeah. Ah. So the point is that you could have defined from the beginning ah. this out of the graph is in the so we know this is a third subject star homomorphism, uh, and then there are some theorems about grassy star algebras that in, uh, implies that the map is also injective. One of them is the gate inverse theorem, mm -hmm. uh, and this I think is the easiest approach to, to do it to have the gauge action. Let's see star of e. To just uh, take its projection, so for every c in the circle, sigma z projection, that's a projection, uh, b partial zone three. Just multiply the but it's also easy to, to conclude that we have a gauge action on this new algebra as well. The gamma z of the action, spectrosometry. Z times spectrometry. Why is it easy to build? Because if you look at the relation and if you add uh, an element of the circle here, is it going to be the same thing as T E star T E and the same thing here? So whatever the representation that we have for this universal star algebra, this if you put Z uh, in front of T E and Z uh, star in front of the other one, this is going to be the same thing. So that's this map. So, and also it's easy to show that uh, if you compose it with snap uh, five, I'm just writing with the right fraction. So I see it's going to be of sigma z is going to be gamma z plus phi or z. Of course, you have to prove that this gauge action on this algebra that you built is also strongly continuous. It's the same argument used for the graph sister algebra. And then the unix, the gauge unix. I is a bit So could have start from the beginning to build an algebra using pin terms. And now what I'm doing is trying to find other examples where we don't have a definition already and try to define new algebras using. Yes, that's my time. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, your last chance for a question or comment. Go ahead. So here, the pitch uniqueness means that's you have a Z rating at both sides, right? So this P like preserve this Z rating, right? So which means it's a so this gauge uniqueness uniqueness says that it's an injective. Yes, that's the other. Uh, but it's not a Z. Yeah, it's a Z one. Yes, yes. Yeah. So that's weak. Okay. Where where does this appear? This this gauge uniqueness there. 
Sorry? Where is, where's the first place that this appeared? This, um, uh, oh, there are many places. I found one which called the ideal structure of Kunz or grassy strata or Kunz Krieger algebra, something like this. Yes, it's about what? Because, like, a, so just a grading, right? So it's about C, using the C star property, like a, you have this injectiveness using the. Here, the, here this identity just means that this V preserved this, the, the, the gradients on two sides. Yes, like, yes, yes. And then then to get injectiveness is just it's some special property about C style. Uh, for graphs, yes. So yeah. Only for graphs. Yeah, there, are, there are several versions for all the algebra as well. Uh, but uh, I think the one of the more general is using that Kuntz famous construction mm -hmm. because the gauging bears deal with that. Because I think the the Katsura ideal is the one that uh, is the largest ideal where you had this uh, gauging bears theorem. But uh, yeah, I think one of the first times that I was uh, trying to look at the, yeah, I'm not sure if it was the first one, but I think it was something like the ideal structure of uh, or gauge, yeah, yeah, gauge the ideal of uh, graph algebras. Uh, Bates, Holmes, Bates, yeah, Bates and yeah, it's it. yeah. I mean, it's it's a non-trivial theorem. Oh, of course. <laughs> Otherwise, it won't be. Yeah. And 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 of course, we, we are banking on the fact that graph sister algebras are universal sister algebras. Yes. Yes. But, but that's really, um, I mean, this is a big game theorem because the criterion that you get for injectivity is, is extremely easy to apply. Yeah. I mean, he, he, I, I, I had it in real life that I, I had a non-obvious claim and then it's, aha, that's a graph sister algebra, the formula works, so it is compatible with the Hedgehog's theorem, bang, I'm done. And the most difficult part of what I want to prove is prove it. Yeah, so that's a big upshot. There's another important unique theorem of the national for all graphs, but for all graphs that's fine this condition L that says if you have a normal morphism, if you only look at the projection and they are not zero, then yeah. the F is injected. Exactly. So you see this is that's very, very, very strong. Yeah. Very strong. It's yeah. very interesting that you have proof of this exoposition without using yes. terms of graphs. Yeah. It should be possible. To yes, yes. Uh, we have to find an interesting representation, a paper representation of the graph sister algebra where this, this conversion works. I still haven't tried to do it, but the things you're supposed to. For, for the, as I said, for the exolac algebras, which are uh, uh, close causing to, to the graph system, we have done this. There's a, a, a paper presentation, then use the paper presentation and show there. I totally want it. Also, just slightly related question. So when we construct this universal C star algebra, do we automatically get a U1 action or some other sort of action on this C star algebra? Or, or do we not want it? No, I think it's this kind of a particular of uh, this algebra generated projection in partial isometry. Yes. Then you have this thing like the partial isometry with its stars. Because then the, the complex numbers are just gonna cancel out and, yeah. and here's the projection, it's uh, the identity. But it's not for every universe. But you can think about other special relations admitting some effects like this, mm -hmm. cancellation of some action. Yes. And surely it generalizes to higher end graphs with uh, U1 replaced by a torus. Okay. Yes. But it's not UN, it's a torus. Okay, I think it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. The comment I, I expect is maybe in this theory, there will be a rich source of examples coming from uh, some sort of uncountable combinatorial structure. I don't know whether Piotr you remember last year in mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. was this talk by Mirna Jamoina about mm -hmm. uncountable uh, combinatorial structure. Mm -hmm. It was called Morasses. This mm -hmm. is some sort of set theoretic stuff. But uh, okay, I think that. In Warsaw, there, there is a mathematician called Kotlider. Yes, he's in, he's in Impan, yes. Yes, yes, he's in Impan. So, so he's interested in contracting some wild examples of sister algebras also, but in general, Banach spaces. And I, I expect that maybe in some sort of this uncountable combinatorial structure, you would find a rich source of examples of something which is very exotic. Okay, so not like some central example which everybody is interested in, but rather something in, in the direction whether there is some strange algebra with some strange properties. And maybe this would be a, It's probably feasible, it's just unexplored, right? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. yes since, since people working in sister algebras usually 
are coming from different backgrounds than people working in set theory and it's not comfortable or denouncing something like that. So even for all of us, generally the buy probably yes. because they play the most important. Oh, yeah. I received the mail this year. I'm not sure exactly what he uh, was trying to do, but again, so I was trying to find some counterexample and then you look at the paper. Maybe we can try to use this. And in fact, the, uh, his construction was unmissable in this sense. So I hope he, he could find the exact right, right. I think that is very unexplored and something to be done here. So I wonder what would be the Levi Path algebra version of SOT. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, quite level. Yeah. I think uh, one thing that you can try to do then is mix Boolean algebras. And then instead of looking at the sum, look at the supreme of its projections. Mm -hmm. So maybe we can try to impose not the sum, but impose some infinite supremums to be true in the Boolean algebra projections. Ah, so, so we are replacing topology by, by some order. Yes, yes. That's one idea that I had to, to see if I can somehow <laughs> do this for life. But order is also topology. But a very special one. Yeah. But then you be specific for projections. Mm. Okay, I think it's time to wind it up. Let's change this again for a bit. I think just stop recording.